you everyone, wonderful good morning, thank you for this nice introduction. Um, you've had a bit of a background about me, I think if you understand a bit of my background, you understand the philosophy that I kind of want to bring through our company and through everything I do to the entire ecosystem and hopefully all the people that join that ecosystem. Um, for me, I see huge power in blockchain, especially in decentralization, obviously the area that I'm in is cryptocurrencies. I have a completely different background. I don't come from finance, I don't come from law, which is actually something that many, many people in blockchain today come in. Yes, we have a lot of computer scientists, but it's not the area that I'm from. I'm Actually, my professional background is I studied medicine, so I'm a medical doctor, and I always wanted to become a surgeon. In 2011 was the very first time I heard about this idea of Bitcoin, but back then I wrote it off as a scam because to me, the way I understood it, it was not clear. And this is actually one of the very first lessons that I learned back then and that I would love to share with you. If we want cryptocurrencies or blockchain to go mass market, the concepts have to be really, really simple, straightforward and clear. And that's, I think, where we as companies and also all of us that know about cryptocurrencies really have to do a, our share for everyone else. Because when I read about Bitcoin the first time, it was so complicated to me that I said, this is never going to work. And the only reason it's so complicated is because it tries to scam me out of my money and that's why it's set up in such a complicated way. Well, today actually I know that Bitcoin can be explained so simple. The concept of a blockchain, of decentralization can be so simple. But it is up to us and companies to actually explain that to people. So that is one of the very first things that I learned. If cryptocurrency should go mass market, if blockchain decentralization should go mass market, it has to be really, really simple. In 2014, I met my co-founder, Toby, who studied artificial intelligence in Japan. And I met him in Bangkok, total random coincidence, and he told me about Bitcoin once again. And he told me about blockchain and about how all these things work. And for the very first time, I understood the concept of not having to trust a central party, but trusting an algorithm, trusting cryptography, trusting a community that all agrees on certain principles. And this was such an easy understanding because our daily used language works in exactly the same way. I don't have to teach you how English works. We all agree on these words and the words I'm using, there's no rules of what words I can use and what not to use. You all understand them and we agree on them. So it was such a simple concept. And it was this question then that we asked ourselves that really kind of drove what we built over the past two and a half years, this company called Tenex, where we asked, so, if we know what we know, what would cryptocurrencies and blockchain need in order to truly go mass market? And what it comes down to is you need to be able to use these things called cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, Ether, Dash, Monero, Zcash, all these things are really exciting. But if they're just in some cloud up anywhere, whatever you want to call it, that doesn't help you much. And so for the past two and a half years, we've been really working towards how can you make these cryptocurrencies spendable? in the most easy and most straightforward way possible. And so that's how we kind of started 10X. It is an app that you can download and you can order a debit card through there and you can fund this debit card with various cryptocurrencies. You can do this with a click of a button. You don't need to do complicated left and right. It's all super user friendly, super straightforward and you can do this all from your phone. Now at the moment, we only have a one direction. You need to have cryptocurrencies already and then you can spend them through that card online and offline all around the world. But starting next year, we're going to add the opposite way as well. Imagine with the click of a button, you can, in a very, very easy way, get your euros, dollars, Swiss francs, whatever you have, into cryptocurrencies. And you just do this with the click of a button. Well, then comes the next step. The next step is, what if you don't even have to decide which cryptocurrency you want to hold? Because you could link these cryptocurrencies. And that's something we're working on which is a project called Comet. It's a cryptographically secure network. And our company is based in Singapore. We're working a lot with MAS there, which is the regulatory body. And they're very interested in what we're doing. Because what Comet would allow people to do is, it allows to connect cryptocurrencies so people don't have to think about which cryptocurrency they own because they're linked anyways. Imagine it like the internet. You don't have to worry which server you're using you have access to all the other things. And if I go to www.apple.com, the website is Apple, no matter if I access it from the Netherlands, from Austria, from Germany, or from Singapore. Yes, it has some country specifics, but it's still very agnostic. And 
this is what is a very key concept for cryptocurrencies and blockchain to catch on. Because if I think of my mother today, my mother understands the concept of blockchain and cryptocurrencies because I explained it to her. But she's not interested in getting into it at the moment because she says there's way too many hurdles, way too many questions, way too many decisions. She uses the internet though because all she has to do is she has to open her phone, log in and she can send me a WhatsApp message, she can open the website. She doesn't have to worry about how the internet works. In blockchain, we always believe we need to explain to everyone what the blockchain is, because otherwise they don't know how to use it. And if I can say the key point when cryptocurrencies and blockchain will go mass market is when people can use all these services without having to wonder what a cryptocurrency is, what a blockchain is, but they just know it works and they know they can trust that entire system. And this is where regulators come in. Regulators, I feel at the moment, they're taking a very passive approach. They're watching because they're scared that if they make a regulation, they're taking a regulation that might be the wrong one. What I see with this is it keeps large institutions, it keeps large companies from actually going into the market. Because one of the worst things if you have a box is you don't know what's black and what's white. It's one of the worst things you can have. So all you're trying to do is you're trying to get as far to the safe side as a company as possible, which is a really big downside for the users. You see this with ICOs at the moment. We did an ICO in June. We did one of the largest ones in the world. We received equivalent of cryptocurrencies, 80 million US dollars. And we did it in the most secure way for us as a company, which is not always an advantage for the user. But we do this without taking advantage of the user. So my call for regulators would be, if you want to spur this movement, if you want to speed it up, take a stance. Take a stance because you can shift that stance a bit along the way. But if you take a stance, it allows larger bodies and it allows larger institutions and thereby funds to come in and speed up that entire mass movement. Uh, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer that and obviously afterwards. So thank you so much. That was my short part of the